Hello there. Um, today, I am going to be reviewing and analyzing Chapter 10. Now, I gotta admit, I am very bad. I've been reading up until Chapter 15, and I have my little Sharpie, my little highlighter. But I gotta say that if you've read this book, you know that it's probably impossible to put this down. Once you get to chapter 10 and onwards, I think it's actually chapter 11 um, that really starts it. Yeah, chapter 11 is where it gets really intense. But um, right now the games are uh, starting. And let me just say these reviews are going to be filled with things that i have um, starting to notice now. And they're not just going to be recaps of what's happened. I really hate those kind of reviews. It's like, you know, if I want to know what happens, I want to read the book. I want to hear people's opinions on it. So today I have with me this girl, I guess. What's your name again? Hi. Hi. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and go over these things. So if we, right after, in chapter 10, we left off, uh, Peter confessed his manly love for Katniss. His, should I say manly or should I say um, not understandable? You know, um, yeah, not understandable would be a better one. I mean, I don't know why anybody would like her. Yeah, especially, especially after she's been a bitch to him. Like, yeah. Oh wait, uh, can we get to that? Yeah, we no, that already. No, we haven't. No, yes, we no. We, listen, we haven't. Okay, haven't we? I'm gonna prove it to you. Okay, the highlighter does not lie. Okay, don't doubt the highlighter. Okay, so, um, anyway, sorry to spoil. You know, but anyway, so yeah, so Peta's, you know, just confessed, and you know, she's blushing like crazy, being a little girl, and she's like protesting it in her mind, which is typical of someone that just denies Peta. Seriously, this whole book, uh, Katniss denies Peta in every way, shape, or form. If there's any act of kindness, she she's like, hmm, he's obviously trying to kill me. You know, like it, it's amazing to me, like how she judges Peta, and, and you know, I'm starting to think that it's not really Katniss is false, but this may actually just be a pathetic attempt for Suzanne Collins to make it make little girls think that Peter's a bad guy. I mean, anybody that thinks Peter's a bad guy is probably retarded. I'm just saying because Peter's clearly not the bad guy type. You know, it's kind of obvious. I mean, if you took out the bread story, maybe, but no 10-year-old's going to give someone a bread and then turn around and try and kill. You know, it just doesn't it's not fit. It doesn't fit. I mean, I don't know if she's trying to show that Katniss has that fear or if she's actually trying to make Peta seem like a bad guy. But I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's not the author's fault. But those are the possibilities, at least, I think. What do you think? Hmm, that's interesting. I never thought about that. But Katniss is, I think it's more in Katniss's character to be irrational towards people. You know how she's irrational towards her mom and she doesn't consider um, having any kind of relationship with Gail other than hunting buddies. Although she is jealous of him girls when they like him well actually she she's come to terms with her feelings recently um i think it was in chapter eight or nine she starts going we're much more than friends over this past year oh yeah so um the next thing i want to talk about is how the audience is so involved in these hunger games you know at first i was like you know maybe the capital just likes it but they're like super involved like the the crowds are going crazy over like 16 year old confessions like, they're like, oh my god, PETA likes this girl, it's unrequainted love, this is so serious. And like, they're all like cheering and howling, and even during when she, I mean, the fact that she was on fire in the crowd was pretty cool, but like, they're getting like really into it, they're like little fanboys, like, oh my god, this is crazy, this is epic drama, I don't know. I mean, maybe they don't really have any, you know, any kind of drama TV or anything, this is probably the one thing that really gives them entertainment. Maybe. I don't know that for sure, but I think it's very interesting that the audience is so like, into these this thing. Anyway. Um, do you have anything to say? I think that's awesome that they're so into it. Um, it's very understandable, and it's pretty cool. It's they're, they're like it's the livest form of live TV ever, because people actually die. Yeah, and it actually, I gotta admit, the whole concept of the Hunger Games sounds like a really cool thing to watch. If you can minus the death I would love to see that in real life. Like, if if it was, like, a virtual world, but it wasn't, like, a game. Like, it was actually people, and it's just, like, if you died, you got teleported back or something. I think that would be pretty cool to watch. W- would you want to watch something like that? I definitely want to watch something like that. I think, like, um, Cadness's whole thinking process as she's running away, like, what she thinks about food and, like, all the practical things is really interesting. I really like that. 
Yeah, it's definitely going to help her later in the games. Um, so let me talk about something. Um, you know, after Peter confessed his love, of course, Katniss' first reaction isn't to talk to her about it, but to punch him in the face. Actually, she um, she pushed him down, um, which is surprising because Katniss is supposed to be like a you know really really small compared to Peta, and you know, like she's so angry. I mean, like why would you be angry at someone for kissing the female? Like she thinks that it makes her look weak. But he was actually trying to help her. We find out that it wasn't a real confession of love. It was more just a, uh, you know, oh, I wanted to help you out kind of thing. Like, I wanted to make you feel better. You know, or not make you feel better, um, make you look good. Because it makes more sponsors and stuff. And she starts realizing that. She's like, oh, yeah, you know, I did kind of look like a you know, twirling idiot. And I agree. Seriously, I hate that. But, you know, she, of course, reacts like this. I think it's kind of irrational. But um, it's hilarious how how much Peta is like basically giving her so much help, and she's just denying it all along. I feel bad for Peta honestly, because I don't understand why Peta likes her. I mean, I was thinking about it. You know, maybe it's kind of a crush. You know, from earlier. But what exactly does he like about her? I mean, what is it? Is it the 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 strength to never give up, which is respectable, taking care of your family. That's that's no big deal. That's no that's no picnic. Uh, but I mean, what is it exactly? I, I want to know this. And it, and for those that maybe think, but it didn't Peter just you know uh, say that his feelings were legit? But I mean, I'm not saying I'm not. I don't know this. You know, I haven't read any further. I, this isn't a spoiler, but I'm pretty certain that Peta is totally into Katniss. I mean, it's one of those things where it's so obvious that. It should be painfully obvious to you that Peter likes Katniss. If it isn't, I'd reevaluate your life. <laughs> but anyway, what do you think? Um, looks like I need to reevaluate my life. Well, okay, I have to defend Katniss. Oh, first of all, I have to say that it's okay that she pushed him down because she's a girl, and it's okay for her to, uh, like, punch people in the face of their guys. But it wouldn't be okay the other way around, of course. Of course not. But I have to defend Katniss. She's a skilled hunter, and, you know, she has to take care of her family. So she has some admirable qualities. So if you look at her from afar, you can be like, oh, yeah, she's pretty respectful. She's a strong, independent woman. Maybe he just hasn't realized yet that she is irrational and she doesn't understand her own emotions. He'll realize that probably. Well, he would if he got closer to her. But by that time, it would be too late. You know what it probably is? Oh, that sounds legit. She's probably got a nice ass. That's probably the only thing she's got going for her. I see. I see. It's very interesting that you, uh, what is it called? Project your inner thoughts onto Peter like that. Listen, I'm, Peter's my bro. Me and him go a long way. I know. I know. Me and Katniss are very similar. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, enough about that gay. I mean, awesome stuff. Um, I don't think it's gay. I actually do like the romance. But um, I actually think it's sad that Effie. Even though she was kind of like saying all those mean things earlier, you know, she was always saying like mean things to District 12, but now she is actually apparently forced to say that. When Effie was saying goodbye to Katniss, you know, she was forced by law to say something like, I wouldn't be surprised if I finally get promoted to a a decent district next year. Like, that sounds kind of harsh. You know, she's insulting the district, and and, and Katniss could tell that she was forcing herself to say it. So it'd be kind of cool if Effie kind of changes her mindset. You know, that'd be, I mean, I I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Because Effie seems like a dull character, but um, well, okay. how did you know she was forced to say that? Well, it says it here. Um, it, um, uh, Effie is apparently required by law to say something awful. She adds, you know, then the quote. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Maybe, maybe Katniss was being sarcastic. Um, maybe she was like, what? Why would she be sarcastic here? Okay. Okay. Um, Maybe Cadness was like, "Is this bitch like required by law to say this? Because there is no way someone can be that mean or retarded." Or did she actually literally? Mean um, I'm pretty sure she directly says this. Why would she be sarcastic? Why? Who is she being sarcastic to? Not like sarcastic, but it's her way. Okay, of- listen. Yes. I know you want to defend Katniss and make everyone else her enemy, and you're just a huge fan girl of Katniss. But listen, she's directly saying that she's apparently required by law to say something awful. Okay, so. It's not like, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, why, Effie apparently likes Katniss now, so why would she say that? I mean, just to be mean. Like, come on. It doesn't make sense. Listen, I know I'm right. All right? Um, 
so I, I think that this is another thing that really made me get goosebumps during this. Um, Haymitch originally said something like, stay alive um, to them, and there was a big heated thing that happened to that because he thought it was a joke. So, yeah, stay alive. Haha, <laughs> there's some advice. But now he actually looks at him seriously and is like, you know what? When the, when the gong rings, you need to get out of there and stay alive. And they can they can tell it's more serious. I thought that was pretty intense. You know, that's that's tough to say to somebody. Um, so some of the things that happened. Um, uh, Peter was saying something about, uh, you know, I've never really been a contender in these games. Uh, well, actually, let me let me get into what happens here. Um, this is actually a really sad scene. I really respect. Peter after he said this. Um, this is, uh, I guess she was on a rooftop and she sees Peter on the roof kind of like sitting by himself and he's kind of sinking into his th- own thoughts. And this is actually a quote from the movie trailer at least. Um, and he says something like, uh, you know, he's like, I don't want to die. I want to die as myself. Does that make any sense? You know, I don't want them to change me in there, turn me into some kind of monster that I'm not. And, you know, and he's really giving out his, you know, he's like, you know, I don't want to change. And I respect that. You know, if I was in the games, I'm sure most people wouldn't want to lose themselves. They want to participate in the games if they really, I mean, unless they're crazy. But, you know, like I would actually be like, you know, I don't want to lose myself. I don't want to, I don't want them to see that I'm an animal or anything like that. I want to actually, you know, be, be who I am, at least die with honor or dignity that I have left. House would argue that you can't die with dignity, but, um, and then it's funny, you know, she's actually felt inferior, you know, she was actually, like, talking about how to survive, but, you know, Peter's been actually thinking about how he's going to maintain who he is, you know, his purity to himself, um, and he actually said that he said he would kill some, he'll, He'll kill someone else, which is surprising to me because I didn't see. To me, it's like it takes a lot to kill someone. Like they always, they always pass it off in stories like it's easy, not like I know or anything like that. But <laughs> and just saying that, it, it, I can imagine it takes a lot more than just okay, I'll kill someone. Like it, it takes a lot more guts to brutally murder a child, like that. I mean, if it's like someone that's trying to kill you, okay, you kill them. But someone that's like a kid, like I, can you really imagine stabbing like a little kid? I mean that. Or anything, you know, stabbing, shooting, whatever, cutting other head off with a sword. That's that's not something that I could just you could just pass off. But anyway, I'm surprised at that. But I like how he says, "I want to show the capital that they don't own me. I'm more than a piece in their games." I think that's pretty badass. Um, and then this is where Katniss says something really irrational, and this is why I hate Katniss. Now, listen, I want you to calm down. Listen, I know that you're probably listening to this, and you love Katniss with all your heart, and you love her. And you just don't ever want to see anything bad be said about her. But you need to listen to this. If someone said something like, you know, he's like, you know, I want to show them that I can fight and be myself. And I'm not just a piece in their games. And then she says, but you're not. None of us are. That's how the games work. You know, she's being bitchy. And it's so pathetic how she shuts him down. And then and then he's like, you know, you know, there's still me and there's still you inside. Don't you see? And then she says, a little only. But no offense. Who cares, PETA? You know, like, she's just like, no, no, this is the game. This is how it works. We have to murder people. We have to not become ourselves. We have to give up. We have to basically be the uh, the capital's bitch. It's pathetic. And then it's funny that he says something really funny. Uh, it's funny. He says something like, um, you know, he's like, uh, she's like, you know, look, you know, we can spend this last hour of your life planning noble death, but I choose to spend my rest of my life in District 12. And he's like, wouldn't be surprised if you do. Give my brother my best when you make it back, will you? And then she says, count on it. You know, that that's fucked up. You know, he just she he he she knows that his mother like basically beats him and whatever, and she's basically saying, Yeah, fuck you to her to him while he's sitting there being sad. It's really it's it's like she doesn't care about other people's feelings. And I can't like someone that does that. I'm sorry. I can't like someone that just disregards other people's feelings and shits on them and says basically, hey, I don't give a shit about you or your family. I'm going to kill you. To me, if you say that to someone, you're crossing the line. And then it actually is funny. Um, uh, he actually, before this, he was saying something like, um, uh, you know, he's like, what else am I allowed to care about at this point? And then, you know, and she was like, you know, care about what he, uh, Hamish said. Stay alive. And then he smiles. 
Um, you know, and he looks sad and he says, okay, thanks for the tip, sweetheart. And, and, I, and it's just like, I like how Peta's doing that, you know. I hope she realizes that you can't just be a capital's bitch. Ugh. So anyway, what do you think? Yeah, that's the incident I was referring to. I guess you're right. I guess we didn't cover that yet. So this is why I don't understand why Peta likes her. I guess it's admirable, her strength, and how she can disconnect herself from her feelings that she was probably never connected to in the first place and survive. Like, I guess that makes someone strong. But it's like, it's like, I guess he just like overlooks how mean she is to him and he, how she doesn't care for him, but he cares for her anyway. He must be some sort of a sadist. I think he is, or she's got a really nice ass. I mean, I've done a lot for some ass. You know, I've had to murder children for some ass. It wasn't the child's ass. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, another thing I want to talk about is Titus which was apparently another tribute. I don't know if he won or not, but basically he started eating people in the Hunger Games. Like, that's, that was just some crazy shit that happened, basically, that we learned about. And it kind of... Sh- I think that's kind of like a little foreshadowing that shit's going to get real quick um, when uh, the Hunger Games happens and there's going to be a lot of brutal violence. And I got to say, this may be a spoiler, there's some fucking gruesome shit. Seriously. I, at first I was like, oh, they can do PG-13 in a movie. If they were to show some of the shit that's going to happen, I'm telling you what, this should be rated fucking R because that what happens later is so brutal. I, I actually was like, oh my God, that's terrible. I have to tell them. To brace them. Okay, so... And then I want to talk about something else. This is a huge foreshadowing thing and I guarantee you this is right. I don't want to see your reaction because th- she's actually read the movie. I mean, uh, read the books. And um, she knows pretty much what happens, but she's doing these reviews anyway. Okay, so I'm telling you right now that these birds are have a huge significance later. I'm going to tell you why. Okay, because all these birds seem to give out some kind of warning call whenever there's a hovercraft. And, and it's not just like a regular warning call. They actually, um, like, they know the hovercrafts are there. And it seems to me like these rebels program them or train them to do that because whenever she talks about it she doesn't say you know a warning call she says the warning call and i'm telling you these and these birds somehow know these hovercrafts are there and they go they go silent and they make some kind of warning call and i think it's very very interesting i can't i want to see this happens this happens this also they do that again later and i want to i'm telling you i'm telling you that's my prediction they have a huge significance later okay I'm not sure if they're mocking jays or not. Um, they just say she just says birds. You know the warning call is just they're silent. No, it says that they give out a warning call. They don't. They they in the book it says they go silent and then give out a warning call, and not a warning, the warning call. Um, but anyway, and then and then we learn about these basically uh, alien hovercrafts that they have, which is pretty interesting. Um. Uh, it's, it's an interesting choice, you know, the future, and they have all these things, but then hovercraft is kind of kind of interesting, and it apparently has like some kind of magnetic thing that makes people not be able to move or attach to the ladder, which is pretty cool, too. And then they stick a tracker inside of Katniss. That may be significant later. And then we learn that Katniss is actually a little bit emo. She's, forced, she's basically hurting herself to deal with her anxiety, which is understandable, but I mean, hurting my... I wouldn't want to hurt myself. Like, I would just deal with it in my head, but she's actually, like, forcingly sticking her finger down this fucking hole in, in her arm. I mean, that's that's a little brutal. I mean, you can, like, you know, kind of shake your head, clench your fist, but that's, that's a little gross. It doesn't go inside her arm, but she's pushing down where that tracker went inside of her arm and, like, really forcing it down, really hurting herself. To me, that's a little, that's a little, uh, a little crazy. What do you think? Well, David, not everyone uh, has, like, the perfect way to deal with stress like you do because not everyone is superhuman. It, I think this is totally understandable. I mean, she's facing her death. She's not going to react normally because there's no normal way to react to facing your death. Yeah, I understand that. You know, I, I give her credit. I'm just making fun of her. But, you know, I can understand. Um... But another thing that we learned about the launch room where basically they get out into the Hunger Games. Um, it's called the Stockyard, basically. 
in District 12, or at least the other districts that she says, and it's basically where animals go to slaughter because they just consider it slaughter for their di and the you know the tributes. Um, and then I learned about the mountains and how they actually uh, benefited the uh, capital. Um, and how wait, there's something here. And basically, okay, this is the thing I want to talk about how. They have these uh, tours of previous Hunger Games, and you can go there, and you can reenact events at the Hunger Games, the previous Hunger Games, and you learn about them. It's like a historical museum. That is crazy. That, that <laughs> That's pretty interesting, though. Would you go to one of those museums? Well, if I lived in the Capitol and I was totally brainwashed to see it as entertainment, I would definitely go. Let me ask you the question again. Would you go to those museums? Probably. Yeah, I love they try to mask it. Oh yeah, if I was brainwashed, I'd go. You go right. You go anyway. I mean, I would go tour like uh, what are they called? Concentration camps. So, yeah, I would go there. I think it would be interesting. But I love how the games are like the central form of entertainment. Whether they're to scare people or to entertain like the rich people who don't really, I guess, realize that they're wrong. Okay. Well, um. I knew you were going to ask me that. Uh, yes, I would go. But I wouldn't have the whole mindset of whatever, you know, of being pleasured or whatever. Mm. Well, I think it would be really interesting, kind of like if you make a hobby to study serial killers or something fucked up like that, it would be pretty interesting. Yeah. I know all of you watching have wikipedia like, murderers and, you know, things like the human centipad and the inner workings of such things before. Don't lie. You can lie to us, but you can't lie to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, I want to talk about something here about how I think Cena is a pedophile. I said it. Cena, you know you are. Don't lie to yourself, bro. He's a pedophile. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you. It's the truth. So, apparently, Cena probably isn't gay. It doesn't matter if he's gay or not. Um, he's getting a little bit too touchy with uh, Katniss. It's kind of, it's a little weird. Okay, because it's understandable, you know, whatever, you know, he saw her naked and all that shit. But not only is he staring her down naked, she's helping her put on her underwear like she needs help. And she's braiding her hair while she's butt-ass naked. Okay, braiding her hair while she's butt-ass naked. Like it's nothing, and then earlier she hu he she he like hugged her, and then even earlier, you know, she was he was just like look at my eyes and tell me like you're my you're my friend, and it's a little weird. I'm just I'm just I mean like dude, she's 16, you're probably like 25, 30. I mean that's a little fucked up, dude. I mean I don't care how good that ass is. Um. Uh. So anyway, yeah, I don't, I just think it's a little weird. And and then he kisses her on the forehead towards the end, whenever the games were about to begin. And she, he's the last person that he saw or she saw. I, I'm not looking. I'm sure seen is a good guy, but uh, you know that's what they say to pedophiles. You know, okay. So he was, we never thought he would do such a thing. He was just such a nice guy. He always had my children sit on his lap, like such a great neighbor. Um. Uh. So, and then, okay, and then, basically, they hold hands and stuff. A whole bunch of shit happens, seriously, at the end of this chapter that makes it a little weird for me. Um, That's because you don't like human contact. It's okay. It's okay to come out of your house sometimes. No. I'm a, hikim I'm a hikimori. Um, so, and then we learn about this character named Claudius Templesmith. I'm not sure if we did, but I guess he's like the uh, legendary announcer of the Hunger Games. Kind of like, let's get ready to rumble, and that's it. Holy shit, we're done. If you've listened to this whole video, congratulations. You have no life. No, I'm just kidding. You probably don't. But the point is, this is a feat you've accomplished. You deserve to go to your microwave, put some popcorn there, and listen to this again. Write notes. Take notes of this event that has happened. What do you think? Will there be a quiz? There will be a quiz next video. I expect an answer. And listen, please comment. If you, if you, If you... You know, listen to this, and you thought it was interesting. You didn't think it was anything. You thought it was a piece of shit. You hated that I hate on Katniss. You hate my voice. Say something. Okay? Comment. Let me know that someone watches this. And I, it doesn't matter. It's okay. But 
I do appreciate comments. I do appreciate people talking. Okay, so what do you think? I know you do. You? No, I'm telling you, just say something. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't. See, if you want to hear more of her laughter, you will comment to this video. Okay, I'm going to go now. Bye-bye.